this is Jan Kleinschmidt for JLore. Today we're going to be talking about soybeans and dairy rations. Feeding soybeans to dairy cows has garnered the attention of dairy cattle producers for decades. As a field nutritionist, the question that I get asked most frequently from my clients is, what is the best way to utilize soybeans in a dairy ration, raw or heat treated? The answer is both ways. Confused? Let's take a closer look. Raw beans at about 87% dry matter contain 41.4% crude protein, 20% of this is in the bypass phase, and it has an energy value of 2.11 net energy of lactation. Roasted beans are about 92% dry matter, crude protein 41.3, so very similar, but the bypass protein fraction is 49%. The net energy of lactation is 2.17. 48% soybean meal contains about 90% dry matter. The crude protein level is 53.3 and the bypass fraction is only 28%. The net energy of lactation is 1.99. So all three of these products have very different nutritional profiles. Full fat beans as a protein for dairy cattle makes a great deal of sense for two major reasons, economics and the high energy value of full fat beans. Roasting adds an additional cost, but roasted beans still break even economically compared to commercial protein supplements. On dairy farms with enough acreage to justify growing beans, growing a protein and energy supplement for the herd certainly looks more attractive than other cropping options. The high fat content of soybeans impacts on the dairy ration in two ways. Fat has 2.25 times the energy value of starch and therefore has a higher energy density. Because of this, the cow requires slightly less grain and supplement, allowing her to eat slightly more forage. With more energy coming from fat, there is less starch in the diet. With more fiber and less starch, diets that contain soybeans usually result in a higher butterfat test in early lactation. With more energy available, many cows also respond with a slight increase in milk production or maintenance of body condition. The decision to feed raw or roasted beans will be dictated by the additional cost of heat treating and the quality of heat treatment available. Roasted beans should exit the roaster at 140 to 150 degrees Celsius and steep for 30 to 40 minutes. Overcooking beans denatures the protein, making it unavailable and reduces specific amino acid availability. Heat processed beans should be uniform in color, show no evidence of burning, and have a pleasant, nutty taste. Beans that taste bitter have not been roasted properly. Over the years, I have seen far too many poorly roasted beans that have resulted in on-farm disasters. Undercooked beans have the same properties as raw beans, but are fed out as roasted, presenting inherent problems. Burnt beans render the protein unavailable. Many backyard roasters have both hot and cold spots in them, resulting in both burnt and undercooked beans. I would much rather work with quality raw beans than roasted beans of unknown quality. To use raw soybeans effectively, certain precautions must be taken. Raw beans contain the enzyme urease that breaks down urea to ammonia, making diets that include raw beans and urea unpalatable and potentially dangerous. In hot weather, ground or rolled beans become rancid quickly and should not be stored after processing. Also in raw beans exists the anti-nutrient trypsin inhibitor, which interferes with protein digestion. Therefore, raw beans should not be fed to animals less than six months of age. In mature ruminant, the the toxin is destroyed in the rumen. When too much fat is introduced into the diet or it is introduced too quickly, both milk production and butter fat can be depressed. To avoid this situation, all high fat feeds should be introduced to the rumen slowly. In addition, extra calcium, that's between 1 and 1.1% dry matter, and extra magnesium, that's between 0.35 and 0.4% dry matter, should be added to the diets. 
These minerals, in combination with fat, form soaps that do not coat the feed particles. There is some research that also recommends feeding higher levels of selenium and vitamin E because unsaturated fats reduce vitamin E activity. Store raw and processed beans whole. Crack or roll them as you use them to avoid rancidity, and this is especially true in the warm summer months. Ration fat level must not exceed 7 to 8 percent. This includes 2 to 3 percent from natural sources, 2 to 3 percent from vegetable or tallow, and 2 to 3 percent from bypass fat. Quick tips for utilizing raw or heat treated soybeans in your herd. Raw beans are an excellent feed ingredient for lactating dairy cows. Feed a maximum of 2.5 kgs as fed per head per day of raw beans. Feed a maximum of 3 kgs as fed per head per day of heat treated beans. Raw beans should never be fed with urea or supplements that contain non-protein nitrogen. Use only heat treated beans in young ruminants less than 6 months. Store beans whole to prevent rancidity. Beans should be rolled or cracked before including in a ration. Heat treated beans are more palatable are more palatable and contain more bypass protein than raw beans. In addition, heat treating destroys, destroys anti-nutrient factors such as urease and trypsin inhibitor. However, heat treatment must be done properly and be cost effective. Watch that the total fat levels in the diet do not exceed 7 to 8 percent and unprotected added fat must not exceed 2 to 3 percent of the dry matter intake. Increase ration levels of calcium to 1% or higher and magnesium to 0 0.3 and magnesium to 0.35% or higher. And this is in the total ration dry matter. Added dietary fat can increase the risk of oxidized milk. Vitamin E levels in the total ration dry matter should be between 1000 to 4000 international units per cow per day to help prevent oxidized milk. This is Jan Kleinschmidt for JLOR because nutrition matters.